And so I looked at the global data that we have, which is a matrix uh, that was set up, uh, uh, it's a, what we call the global origin destinations matrix, based on census data, it's stock data. And that's become the standard uh, building block of any discussion of global migration, in fact, any, any discussion of regional migration. Uh, it's, it's passed into the received wisdom, I think we might say, in migration studies. And the points I wanted to get across is, yes, this is a good thing, but it's also got uh, weaknesses. And so we've got to know how to deal with those weaknesses. Uh, a stop figure uh, gives you an idea of how many migrants are in each country at a particular time, but it doesn't say when they got there. Um, and it doesn't uh, really tell you much more than, uh, than these are the number of people in that country at that time. And so I was arguing that we need to move forward with this, and the most obvious way to do that is uh, to look at flow data, to try and develop uh, more accurate flow data, which we can do in two different ways. One is to improve registration data, or a continuous system of registration of how people uh, come into the country and go out, because very few countries have records of how many people leave, and also rec continuous records of people moving within countries. So that's one direction uh, forwards. The other direction would be to look at the censuses, the same as we do with stock data, and try and find out how many countries have direct information on time of arrival, last place of permanent residence, and using these data to try and generate flows. There are other methods, some more sophisticated mathematical modeling. But then I went on to look at what I think is extremely important, is that we tend to look at interstate movement. In other words, movement from one state to another, let's say from China to the United States. And I don't think that's particularly meaningful because you really want to know from where in China migrants come and to where in the United States migrants go. And we know that a lot of that is urban to urban migration, originates uh, in the big cities of China and it goes to the big cities of the United States. There are exceptions. You do find uh, migration out of more small town China or rural parts of other countries, such as uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh, going to the big, big cities of Europe, particularly the United Kingdom, or at least in the past, that was where the most went. Uh, but the, my point was that we really look, that need to look at subnational units and migration to large cities. And I think this is going to be one of the most important ways uh, to improve migration data as, as we move forward. Yes, states control migration that they have the national migration policies, how many people should come into a country, but really it's the cities that have to provide the education, the housing, the, edu uh, the jobs, and most migrants go to big cities. Um, if we looked at the United Kingdom, my own country for example, you would find that uh, the population of London was about 50% foreign born, whereas on average in the United Kingdom it's 13%. That's a huge difference. So most migrants, most international migrants, go to large cities. Oh.